Hello everyone, this is Rob, and welcome back to Media Awareness. In particular, a showcase tonight on Joe Jackson and his album Big World. Um, before I go any further, feel free to check out the links in my description below for my Patreon page and consider becoming a member as well as contacting me on Facebook if you so desire. I'd love to hear from each and every one of you. Also, if this video is helpful, share it with a friend, like it, comment, whatever you like. It's all good. <laughs> so, Joe Jackson's Big World is my favorite album by Joe Jackson. Big World is an album that um, I was introduced to from the Live in Tokyo VHS tape that my local video store uh, used to have. And I rented it so many times that they eventually agreed to sell it to me. Um, and then of course I got the DVD once that became available. The Live in Tokyo show featured a good majority of the songs from Big World. And I, I loved the performance. I thought these songs that I had never heard from him were amazing. And I was just starting to dip my toe into his uh, waters of his career. At that point in time. So it was a good overview. At least of his early days. Uh, for the Live in Tokyo concert. Um, my uncle Michael. Had the vinyl. And he lent it to me. So I could make a, a copy of cassette. At the time. Because it was a, a, it was a really difficult CD. To find here in the U.S at that point in the I want to say early 90s around 90 92 93 roughly 1993 94 was when my uncle lent me his copy of the vinyl and what made Big World a unique album on vinyl was that the album itself is three-sided as opposed to being either a single vinyl with two sides or a double vinyl with four sides. This album was a three-sided vinyl. The reason being, as far as I can determine from what Joe Jackson has stated, is that he had a lot of material written for the album. He was finding it difficult to narrow things down and with the CD format now available for artists to put more material on a release he decided to make the album a little over 60 minutes of music and it basically filled up uh, almost filled up a CD and it filled up three sides of vinyl. The fourth side was just um, a blank side. And if you put the needle down, it would just glide across. So that way it wouldn't damage your, your um, turntable if you were playing it on vinyl. Also, it's interesting to note that the CD, the cassette, and the vinyl all had different running orders for the tracks um, as a result of the different mediums having different lengths of time. So, why is this album so interesting to cover? Not only is it my favorite Joe Jackson album, but the album itself was recorded over three um, nights in particular um, in January roughly of 1986 
and it wasn't a traditional live album, like Frampton Comes Alive, or any other um, live album for that matter, where you hear the audience cheering and um, obnoxiously hooting and hollering at times, all depending on the live album and who you're listening to. Um, I'm sure if people are listening to this and they know me, you know what album I'm referring to. Um, but in this case, Big World was recorded with the audience being politely asked to remain silent through the new songs as the band was still learning the material and they were recording it live. Um, what the point of this was, was to capture the feel of a live album, but without the audience participation in terms of cheering, etc., clapping. Um, and in my opinion, it really works well. You can get a sense when you listen to this album that it is done in front of a live audience. The only song which is the exception to that role is Man in the Streets, which was recorded during a sound check. So I still think of that it counts in, in that in that aspect. Um, because it was still performed live on stage. The songs on this album are just phenomenal. Um, from, you know, the opening track, uh, Wild West, right, right, and, right and Wrong, Tonight and Forever, Shanghai Sky, $50 Love Affair, um, The Jet Set, all of these songs are just outstanding tracks. Um, I can't say enough about this album. Big World, I was able to get finally on CD from a gentleman in the early 1990s who used to get me CDs from Japan specifically. And I got it as an import because by that point in time, it was not available prominently in the U.S. What's also interesting about Big World is the title of the album is written in all these different languages on the cover and the back cover, and it's really a cool album design. Um, Joe Jackson, who is a singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and uh, amazing um, showman really um, did an amazing job with this album and its presentation. The making of Big World was also released on VHS as a uh, limited video release. I finally got my hands on that um, in New York City at a video store that was uh, doing closed-out video um, sales, and they had it there. It was one of my prized possessions on um, VHS. Eventually, a friend of mine in England um, had uh, was kind enough to send me a copy of that on a DVD with the Laughter and the Lust Live um, concert, which was also a VHS uh, release, which I will cover in a another video on Joe Jackson, because Laughter and the Lust is another album which I plan to cover. However, this is Big World. As I said, the Live in Tokyo show really got me hooked and 
made me want the album. I got the album. Initially, I had a copy of my uncle's vinyl and then the CD, and it was just amazing. And Joe Jackson is famous for issue, really going out with him, breaking into stepping out most famously, I would say. But Big World is such an underrated album. It's rare to have an album where every song is good, especially from the 1980s or 1970s, um, even the early 1990s. Those time frames were very uh, iffy when it came to consistency of material. There was a lot of filler that was ten that tended to be present on albums back then, and these. This was um, uh, this was an exception to that, as there was no filler at all. And technically, it is a live album. Now, what he did to make sure the songs were perfect was he would do several takes of a song. So if they made a mistake, even if it was toward the end of a song, they would re-record the song right there on the spot in front of the audience and it was a performance of material and people in the audience from the making them you could tell they were really enjoying this um you know seeing an album actually recorded live you know it's just it's pure live music and there were no overdubs afterwards um the album was taken as is and was released in March of the same year. So th from January to March, that's all it took for this album to get prepared for release. And that in and of itself was very impressive for any album to be uh, have that turnaround time. So when you have a chance, check out Joe Jackson's Big World. Also, if you can, hunt down a copy of the Live in Tokyo DVD. So that way you could see these songs performed live and just how well the audience uh, responds to uh, the material because it is phenomenal material. This is Rob, as always, with Media Awareness. I hope you have learned something in this video and I hope you will check out Joe Jackson's Big World. Um, if you would like, as I said, to leave a comment, uh, leave a like, check out my Facebook page, leave me a message, check out my Patreon, consider becoming a member, and I will be talking to you very soon. Have a great night. Bye.